So in this video, I want to talk about high school DxD, but specifically Rius Grimory, because from an outside's perspective of high school DxD and looking at characters like Rius Grimory, a lot of people see her as just a fan service character. High school DxD is just all about the fan service, and even though we we have a lot of the memes around that you, you go in for the plot and you stay for the plot. High School DxD definitely has a lot to offer as far as story and complexity behind character flaws, strengths and weaknesses come, and Rias Grimory is no exception to that. She is definitely a character that has a lot of reasons to behave in the way that she does, as far as some of her character defects go and a lot of her strengths as well. As far as defects go, I'm sure some of those will be controversial because any time you talk about a, a character defect, a lot of people see that as oh, you're hating on the character, but you've got to understand that we as individuals, human, and in this case, a devil for her, she is created to be human. Like, like, she is just a high school girl trying to live her life in Japan, and she's been frosted all these responsibilities. And there's definitely those moments where she has insecurities, especially when it comes to Re uh, Issei and him... And how he has this phobia when it comes to girls, which is even more hilarious because I remember way back when I talked about High School DxD and I talked about Issei's fears, and I got a lot of hate for that. Because how dare I ever bring up a criticism of a character flaw? But it's not criticism in the sense of saying that the series is bad. No, it's actual praise because it shows that these characters have defects, their strengths, their weaknesses, their highs, their lows. It adds depth, it adds complexity, it adds meaning behind them and it allows for growth and Rias is one of those characters. She has those moments where she has growth and especially in the early parts of the story where yeah she saw Issei as potential so she recruits him or resurrects him or brings him back from the dead and then trains him up, builds a friendship, builds something closer. And in the early stages of the story she kind of saw him as more of a brother type thing like a young brother and then as things go on she starts to develop more stronger feelings because she sees a different side to Issei than just him chasing tail in the sense of things like yeah I can't blame the man I mean when you're surrounded by that many assets or should I say Mount Everest's melons the holy grails of personality traits anything that you can name of the watermelons of watermelons, juggalugs. You can definitely understand why he's definitely like chasing a tire down a road, but in this case, there's multiple tires and he has no idea what he's trying to chase and he's just kind of confused. Like he knows, but he doesn't know. In the sense of he knows he's chasing those juggalugs, but he's not sure which ones he's chasing. He's just trying to grab any that he can get his hands on. And that's why you see those fun back and forth moments between, say, Rias Grimory, Arcano, them having their back and forth, and the playful manner that they have. She's trying to get Issei's attention because she's starting to kind of like him. And a lot of the responsibilities that she has when it comes to prearranged marriages, political maneuvering, she's been thrusted a lot of responsibilities that she herself doesn't want. She's in a noble bloodline, so she's expected to live up to certain standards. And so, yeah, it definitely puts a lot of issues on your shoulder where you can definitely play up and you want to sort of rebel against the system. And in her case, yeah, that's what she tries to do. She tries to get with Issei to tarnish her, deflower her, so that she's not as desired by another individual. And when you look at the differences between how she treats her Porn pieces or teammates or colleagues or friends or family, firmly, as good old <laughs> Fast and Furious. As I said, how she treats her family and how a, di a different individual does, there's a big difference. She builds a much more deeper connection and she's there to support them through the highs and the lows. But also some of these other characters definitely have their own character defects and they've gone through definitely their own issues which they're allowed to overcome with Rias's help in many different situations. But when you look at other groups out there, other teams, they don't care about that. They just see them as assets, tools, chess pieces on a board as quite literally to say. 
And so the relationships are very different and the, because of the lack of bonding, they aren't able to build proper connections and aren't able to lift each other up. And that is, I think, a valuable lesson that people need to learn that they can take from high school DxD. Trying to bring people down to further your own goals isn't going to get you anywhere. Bringing each other up and working as a team is far more beneficial. But because of the selfish nature of humans, there are definitely a, a, devils in this case. A lot of people are more likely to try and hold others back so that they can get an edge. And High School DxD definitely has some of those characters. Rias Grimmer, as time goes on, develops feelings for Issei. He's you know, sure, like I said, he's chasing them, but there's also a deeper component of his personality. He has a gentle side to him, he has a caring nature behind him, and he's trying to look out for those that he cares about and protect them against harm. And she sees that in him. She sees that he's willing to sac make sacrifices, quite large sacrifices, on himself to protect the ones that he cares about. It doesn't just have to be a romantic interest either. He will protect you even if you're just friends. Kiba is one of those examples. So it isn't one of those that he's just a simp, a mindless simp, because I could definitely see that as criticism towards Issei. And what I mean by I can see that is that sometimes I've got to look at idiocy to understand where criticism can come from. And yeah, that's definitely one that I could see people throwing at. Issei's a simp, and that could definitely be a fun video for a different time. But I don't see him as that. I see him as someone that's just willing to do anything to protect anyone around him. But yes, he's surrounded by more women than men. So naturally, he's going to try and protect more women than men. That's just naturally how the story goes. And of course, there's the biases of more women in it. Because hey, we get to see more Juggalugs. More Juggalugs are happy... I was going to make a third eye, uh, third leg joke, but I couldn't think of anything. So we'll just go with that. Yeah, makes Issei's motorboat happier that's the thing about high school dxd as they're getting to is that yes fan service love it it's great but there's many layers to the story and as the story goes on and as the story develops rius grows she builds those feelings she then has more responsibilities thrusted on her and so she's trying to balance being a schoolgirl, but also realizing her responsibilities as a future leader and the fact that she's part of a high class of devil society and having to live up to those expectations, it definitely leads to her having those moments where she just wants to be more playful, have fun, enjoy life, which she deserves. But then again, she keeps getting thrusted back into these big responsibilities of massive game changing, but I would also say civilization changing kind of things because yeah, Devil Society is its own civilization. There's their own culture, their own people, their own political structure. Different layers to those high-class societies and the responsibilities that they need to fulfill to go up in those ranks. And the higher the ranks you go, the more freedom they might get or the more power they can get, the more strings that they can pull. And Rias is expected to rise up to those ranks as someone of her stature and her family connections. And she knows that those responsibilities are going to continue to build up. But she's also trying to live her life as best as she can. She wants to go to school, have fun and all those things, but it can be very quite difficult. So that's why you see those moments, even in the anime, where Rias Grimmery has those moments of insecurity, where she wants... Issei to be more forward about his approach but because of his timid nature because of the past events that happened he's a little bit too scared to refer to her in certain ways she sees that as him not seeing her as a romantic interest because her feelings are very strong they've grown they've built but Issei being who he is and because of the past he's become scared even though he's chasing all these big melons He's also scared to get close to those melons on a more intimate layer because of his past trauma. Now, of course, I will talk about that in a more deeper level in another video because the last time I ever spoke about it, definitely some High School DxD fans got very angry because whenever you criticize a character, and this isn't even criticism, like I said, on a bad level, it's pointing out the character defects that individuals have, which is good, but they see that as, oh, you're hating on High School DxD. It's like, no. Learn the difference. But when you see that, like I said, you understand why Rias Grimmery has those insecurities. 
even though she knows she's very attractive, she's very desirable, she, I think she'd be self-aware that many men would desire to be with her, she's still insecure because the person that she wants is surrounded by a lot of attractive women that he has shown interest in. And I do think the harem nature does make it harder for her because I think she kind of likes being the center of Issei's attention. And even though if we were in a hypothetical situation that Issei had to pick out of one of those girls, he could only pick one, he would pick Rias. Their relationship is far more deeper than any other character. Even as an Akano simp, I can see from a mile away that their relationship is very different compared to the other girls and it's much more deeper and much more connected which is why if it ever did turn into a single girl wins Rias would be the winner out of it all. I'm not saying that that is how the story is going to end. Of course it's going to be a harem ending. That's how it was always going to be but I'm just pointing out that if it was that you clearly understand the one that's probably closest to Issei's heart, and that's perfectly fine. They've had a lot of times to build bonds and relationships, and they work together. They synergize together, and they make a great team and a great couple. The thing also is that even though they do kind of go their own separate ways in as far as goals go, they still are always connected and always wanting to be close to each other on every layer possible. That is in a positive aspect. So you can see that even when their goals don't always completely align, they're always there to back each other up, which is one of the great things about their relationship and why their relationship is so good. And even though this is meant to be a Rhea's Grimmery video, you can't talk about Rhea's Grimmery without talking about the woman, uh, the per person that she is deeply in love with. Because yeah, Issei is a centerpiece of her life. It is one of the major moving pillars of her as a character and how she has grown. She has seen Issei, and I think it's a big catalyst of how she's grown as an individual, while Issei has also grown a lot because of her. They complement each other. They make a perfect couple. That's why I say what I say when I said that if one had to win, it would have been her. And it makes sense with everything they've been through, everything they're trying to overcome together. The strengths, the weaknesses, the highs, the lows, it all makes sense. And Rhea's Grimmery is definitely a character that I think is very lovable. It's easy to understand why you love her as a character, because she is so flavorful, but also playful. It rhymes. But then I'd ask the question off to you is, who is your favorite character? Why are they your favorite character? Don't just say because they're hot, they've got great assets. Yes, I'm the same. Arkano, great asset, she's hot. Totally want to get down and dirty. But I want to understand why you like those characters. Because I think sometimes, a lot of the times, we go into stories and we look at things in a very one-dimensional layer. And there is multiple layers to anime. And I think sometimes we get hate for looking at anime in a deeper layer. But I think there's no shame in that. Because good stories have multiple layers. And I think we should be allowed to talk about those things and express why we like things and why we dislike things. As far as Rias goes, as far as the negative aspects of her go, I think really it comes back down to the same reasons why people like her. It just depends on the individual. Some people love her because of her great personalities and flirtatious way of playing around. But some people don't like that because they see it as objectifying. Oh, the idea of a man and a woman getting together? Ew! Some people just don't like those kinds of stories. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. It's what we love about High School DxD, and it's very clear that nothing is going to change any time soon. So again, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you like about High School DxD? What do you like about the characters? And why do you like those characters? If you do like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.